AI isn't replacing developers, but it's actually making the best ones 10 times faster. Yet most developers are stuck using AI like a simple autocomplete tool. But the real game changers, they are using AI to learn, debug, and even design better than ever before. So let me show you five practical examples how you can instantly level up your AI game and become faster and more efficient developer. The first way is to use AI for automating documentation. So personally, I almost never nowadays write any documentation from scratch anymore, but I rather use AI at least to generate the first draft of any documentation and then modify from there because it's much easier to edit the draft than to start from scratch. And this works very well with isolated use cases, for example, function descriptions. And what I wouldn't do is to ask the AI to, for example, generate full application documentation based on my code base, because this is uh, such a big entity and you want to be as specific as you can with your prompts, because this way you get better results. And some of the use cases I often use this is, for example, as mentioned, generating function descriptions, then also summarizing complex logic in an easy understand way. So if I have a part of code that I don't quite understand, or I have a hard time understanding it and I want to understand it better, it's a good way to get clarity for it by asking AI to, hey, can you explain me? Uh, can you explain this to me in an easy to understand way? And then also I use this for pull request descriptions. And let's see an example of this PR description generation. So let's go to GitHub and I have a new pull request open here or I'm creating a pull request. And in this branch, I made some modifications. So to this page, I removed a section that contained uh, buttons for next and previous posts. And then I also modified the contact page to use x.com instead of Twitter and then renamed it to uh, x, the Twitter text. So now that I have this pull request open, I have this copilot actions button here in GitHub. And when I click this, I can generate the summary from my, for my pull request. So let's try it out. Okay. Now it generated it and let me switch to preview mode so it's easier to read. So let's see, this pull request includes changes to simplify the blog post and contact page by removing certain sections and updating social media links. So, so far it's 100% accurate. And then it provides us the changes for each of the files. So simplification of blog post page removed the read next section and the YouTube subscription prompt. So this is correct over here, but uh, let's see, was there some YouTube section? Yeah, there was, there was the, uh, if you wanna learn more, subscribe to the YouTube channel. So that was 100% accurate. And then for the content page, updated the Twitter link to X. So that was accurate too. I would be happy to just create it like this. Of course, it, if the changes are more complicated, uh, the copilot might not be able to understand it and you wanna add some, uh, more context for it. But for this, for this kind of simple pull request, this is all I would need to make this pull request. Okay. So the second practical way to use AI in coding is to find alternative approaches. So with AI, we can find better coding solutions much faster than by thinking of ourselves or Googling or that kind of stuff. And most often when we create something, we tend to default to the solutions that we know. So you are used to doing a thing in a certain way and most likely you will default to that way every time you are faced with a similar problem. And AI can help us explore alternative options that we probably wouldn't have thought otherwise. And benefits of doing this is that it deepens our understanding. So we learn different ways to do things it can make our app more efficient and easier to understand. For example, if the solution that the AI suggests is more easier to read and understand. And then we unlock new approaches, making us a better developer. So this is kind of related to this one. So when we see the new approaches, 
we learn them and next time we have a similar problem we now have two approaches for example that we can choose from uh, the better one for a given solution or situation and just to give you some reference what I like to do is for example if I have a problem that I want to generate some solutions for it I will generate two or three with AI then I will review those uh, suggestions and identify strength and weaknesses in each of the solution and then based on that I will either choose one of them or tweak one of them and choose it then or just go with the initial solution that I had uh, created and let's see an example of this okay so here I have VS code open and this is just some example project and I'm going to open up this route.ts file and inside of here we have a get route handler that returns a random post from the uh, posts array and the post array is generated like this so we have a function generate random posts and right now it's returning a static array of posts so let's say we wanted to explore another way to generate this fake data so how can we try it out with copilot well I have copilot open right here and in the copilot edits mode and I have the route file that we have open added as context down here so now let's give it a prompt saying that please implement a function generate random post 2 that uses different approach for generating the fake post data and let's add actually then the generate random posts function like this so let's run it and see what it comes up with okay so now it's finished I'm gonna click keep so it's easier to read so right here it added the generate random posts to function and we can right away see that it is implemented a bit differently so over here we have the titles in their array then all the other fields are in their own arrays and then we are mapping the titles over here and then getting the author's date read time content from each of those arrays separately so it's a little bit different approach for generating the fake data than this one and if I were to choose over here I probably would now say that okay I like this one better because it's easy to understand but this has also its benefits so let's actually ask copilot which one should we use all right it didn't quite understand what we wanted let's try again so can you so let's ask it can you explain the differences of those two functions and make a recommendation on which one I should use so let's run it and let's see if it understands it now okay so it starts by explaining the differences in here so it's a hard-coded array of post object and its object contains the uh, predefined values and then the other one is using uh, different arrays for generating the posts and recommendation use the uh, second function if you need a more flexible and scalable way to generate post data this function allows you to easily expand the number of posts by adding more entries to the arrays and then use the first one function if you have a fixed set of posts and do not anticipate needing to add more posts frequently so there you go now you can evaluate which one is better and then uh, choose the one that fits the use case better all right so that was the second way and the third way is to use AI for step-by-step -step learning so we can ask AI to convert the code we are already familiar with so for example if you're familiar with JavaScript you can ask it to convert it to a new language and I found it easier to understand new language if I have I have a reference point to a language that I already know so for example if I wanted to learn Python it would be easier for me to understand if I know that okay this statement in Python means same as uh, this statement in JavaScript because I already know JavaScript and the key here is to not just ask like hey convert this to other language and then read the code but rather instruct the AI to go step by step and explain each step so then we can ask questions for each step before moving to the next one and here I have a prompt for this which goes like I will paste you a source language program code so 
you would input here the language that you already know, for example, JavaScript. Please teach me to write the same program with target language. And this is the language you want to learn. So for example, Python. Go step by step so I understand it each phase. You can teach first step, then wait for me to tell you go to the next step. Each step should feature the source language, so JavaScript code and corresponding target language code. So, so for example, Python code. And then down here we have the code snippet for the program that we want to convert. And I had an example down here with JavaScript and Python, and this is just an Hello World application made with Node.js. So let's try it out. So I'm going to copy it and open up ChatGPT and paste in my prompt and then run it. All right, now it's run. So let's go through the uh, response. So first step one, setting up the basic web server. So here we have the Node code, so the JavaScript code, and then we have the Python code over here. So the corresponding Python code is over here for this JavaScript code. All right. And then it's explaining the differences. So Express VS Flask. So right away, I know that, okay, Flask is probably the same thing as Express is for Node.js. So Express in Node.js is similar to Flask in Python. Yeah. And in Node.js, we require Express, whereas in Python, we import Flask. And then we create the app instance. So here in how we do it in Express, and then how we do it in Flask, and then starting the server. So uh, down here like this. Uh, let me know if you understand this before we move to the next step. So right now I could ask it more questions or I can just tell it to, okay, let's go to the next step. So this is a good way to learn a new language and break down uh, small programs that you already know in one language and then want to learn in another language too. Okay, so that was the third way. And then the fourth practical way to use AI in coding is to use it for debugging error messages. So I have always said that you should always read the error message because that's the best clue you will get uh, for what's wrong with the application. But with AI, this is kind of not necessary anymore because AI can uh, help you solve the error very fast and easily if you just copy paste the error for the AI and ask, hey, how to fix this. And in my experience, the majority of times uh, I've used this, the AI has been able to come up with a solution that works. But sometimes still I need to do some Googling or use Stack Overflow for finding the solution. But those are very rare cases. And AI can do much more than just one thing for your error messages. First of all, it can tell you what the error is. Then it can explain why is it happening. And then also how to fix it. And lastly, also implement the fix. So you don't even have to code the fix yourself because AI can do it for you. And a very good example of this was just a couple of weeks ago when I was updating a Next.js application from Next.js version 14 to 15 on one of my projects. And as you can imagine, there was quite a few breaking changes followed by errors. And to be honest, I did read the upgrade guide and documentation, so I knew what to expect. Uh, but still, when I got the errors trying to build my application, I only copy pasted the error messages to Copilot and asked it to fix them. And it did pretty good job. And the best part in this was not only that uh, Copilot fixed the errors, but as said, it also explained why they happened and uh, how it was fixing them. And this easily saved me hours of time because I didn't have to figure out the errors and fix them manual. And one thing to remember always is to turn review the AI generated code. So you don't want to commit blindly and use uh, whatever code the AI generates, but read it, review it, understand what's happening and make sure that it's okay. Now let's take a look at an example of this. So I have my example project open and I'm going to open up another road file over here. And it looks similar that the last one, but there is some errors over here. So what I'm going to do is just hover them and ask fix using copilot. So let's click that. All right. So it right away says, uh, cannot find name math. Did you mean math? 
the problem is that math should be math with the capital M to reference the built-in JavaScript math object. And then it implemented the change in here. So I can just click accept and now the error is fixed. Of course, this was simple error. You could have probably noticed it by yourself, but when the errors are more complex, this feature is really, really handy. Okay, and then the fifth practical way to use AI in coding is to use it as your personal designer. So design can be hard and especially when you don't quite know what you want. And this is where AI is super helpful because it, act, it can act as a designer for you. And with it, you can quickly generate some boilerplate UI and then tweak it to your liking. And what I like to do when I don't quite know what I want uh, is to use wake prompt. So for example, make a form with name and email field and then let the AI make the UI and then tweak it uh, through few iterations to make it look like something that I am happy with. And let's give this actually a try. So I have an example prompt here. Let's copy it. And I like to use V0 for these kind of tasks. So let's open that up. And now uh, let's paste in the prompt. So the prompt says develop a dynamic form using Next.js. The form should include fields, name, email, and text. Implement client-side validation to ensure that all fields are filled out correctly and that email address is in valid format. Upon submission, the form data should be logged to the browser's console. So this quite uh, exact prompt already, uh, adding these details over here, but they don't affect the design of the form. So we are just saying that develop a dynamic form. So let's run it and see what it comes up with. All right, looks like it's finished. So this is what it came up with. This is pretty much what we asked for, but it's not looking too good. So now what I want to do is tweak it. And I'm not a professional designer, so I don't know what kind of colors or styles or anything we should add here. So what I can just do is type in, make it look cool and modern, use colors. So pretty vague. I'm giving all the control for the AI to choose what cool and modern looks like, but I just know that some kind of look I want. So let's try it. All right, so it's finished. And right away, we can see that it's, it looks much better. So it has this modern look with all the icons and then some colors over here. So I'm super happy with this. I could use this in my application now. So that's five practical ways you can use AI in your coding workflow. And I truly hope you found this video at least somewhat helpful. And if you did, please, subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. And if you are interested in integrating AI to your coding workflow, I also have a newsletter where I share more tips and things related to AI and coding. So consider signing up for that. It's totally free. The link is down in the description.